Hey, welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. As you might have seen from that little intro, we finished our studio and outdoor kitchen finally. I think it looks pretty awesome. Let me know what you think about it right down in the comments below. We've been working on it for a long time. I think it's finally ready to go. So tonight we're going to celebrate the final end of my work of working on this so I can go back to cooking for you guys. So I figured what we're going to do, we're going to take that big old number 12 Lodge Dutch oven sitting right over here and we're going to do a prime rib. So y'all stay tuned. So, so a few of our people that help support our channel tonight in celebration of us finally finishing our outdoor kitchen are going to do a great giveaway for you. The first one I wanted to mention is uh, Seminole Swamp Seasoning. Okay, you see us use it all the time here on the channel. They do not, pay, I'm not a paid ambassador or endorser of this product. They don't pay me one dime to talk about it, okay? I talk about it because I love it and everybody, uh, you know, uses for also has been, uh, you know, really likes it. They, the only way they help us out is to do giveaways to you guys. They're at home watching these videos and they take care of that for us here. Um, but they don't pay me to talk about this product at all yet. So we're going to do probably multiple giveaways uh, on this video right here of the Seminole Swamp Seasoning. Since I, you know, they, they committed to doing it once a month and it's been like, since we're, you know, in the process of, you know, a whole bunch of family things going on and relocation and building all these kitchens, we haven't had a chance to get back to these guys to send any out. So the other thing we're gonna give away, and this is gonna be the biggie, all right? And if you didn't see the video of our unboxing of this eight inch dowel strong vegetable knife, Okay, called the deflector. This is also doing a giveaway on this knife on this video. So stick around to the end of the video and I'm gonna tell you how to be in the running for one of these or some of this. And what they're giving away is the three pack, the three different kinds they make, okay? So stick around and I'll show you how or tell you how to qualify for one of these giveaways. So some time back we did a prime rib, but we did it on our big air tank UDS smoker, uh, smoke prime rib. It turned out really, really awesome. I think we made it for Easter. I'm gonna leave you a card right up here to uh, see that video, as well as I'm gonna leave it a link for you down in the description box below. Go check that out, and we'll maybe we'll compare the results of that video to what we're gonna do tonight. And the thing about prime rib, it is a low and slow thing if you want it to come out right. Otherwise, it's just a roast. So what we're going to do is we're going to get it in there at Dutch oven. We're going to give it a good sear. You see the fire already going in here behind me uh, in the chimney there. And uh, we're going to sear it off real good. Then we'll reduce that temperature. And then we're going to just let it go till it burns out. We're probably going to have to, after about an hour, we'll keep checking that internal temperature. And that's going to be important to make your prime rib turn out uh, the, the, you know, the temperature you want, whether that's rare, medium, rare, medium, I would definitely not go well. Okay. Uh, medium would be about the far as I would go with a prime rib to keep it nice and juicy and flavorful and tasting like prime rib should taste. We're going to start out with my kind of one line method for setting up a, your Dutch oven for, for searing. And that's going to allow you to keep that Dutch oven moving because, you know, it's going to choke out in certain ports, parts. I already have this uh, pre-seasoned. It's got a little oil in it. Uh, we're going to put some more in it here in a minute. But we're going to go ahead and let that, it's a little cool out tonight, finally here in uh, North Florida. It's gonna be down in the 40s tonight and it's already dropping. So we're gonna need a little more charcoal than we probably normally would. I do have my Lodge 4-in-1 sitting off to the side here to hold the lid. We'll 
spread these out a little more so when that starts dying down on that side we can kind of move it over to this side and then we'll have enough coals for the rest of this cook probably more than we need but uh, that's the prep for the Dutch oven so let's go ahead and get our roast ready on it. and we're not gonna have to slice this we're gonna leave it whole we're not gonna trim any of the fat this is just the way it came and also I should note that I found one with the best marbling I could find it was you know, in the, in the Cairo pack from the store and I let it age in the refrigerator for two additional weeks from the time I bought it. That's gonna really help with your flavor and tenderization. So what I think is gonna be important is to sear this thing before we do anything else to it, like season it. We're not gonna put any kind of seasoning on it yet until we get that guy seared on all of its sides because otherwise we would just burn our seasoning and our seasoning's got garlic, herbs, uh, and pepper in it and that pot as you can tell is pretty hot. So we'll go ahead and sear it first and we'll pull it back out and then we'll put our seasoning on before we start our bake. on this side to cover a little bit because we got choked out a little bit by the pot and it'll come back up to heat and we move it back over. like that on all your sides. We've been rotating it around and it's pretty heavy and the last thing I want to do is drop it. I bring it back over on my pan. I'm going to let it cool for a minute. Then I want to drain that. That's a lot of the fat that's already cooked out of. We only start with about two tablespoons of oil in there. A lot more than that now. So let's go ahead and we'll drain that out. I'm going to set this oven for like 250, 275. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to, here we're going to use a little bit of the coal counting method. Some of these coals are already burnt down a bit. I'm going to try to sweep them all off over here. Some of them lit pretty good and some of them are not hardly going at all. So... I'm just going to pile them up here for a minute because, you know, when you put that oven on top of it, I don't know, you know, and that's one of the, one of the things I don't think anybody else on, uh, on YouTube that's trying to teach Dutch oven cooking everybody really takes into account. And, uh, that's why I'm always preaching to you. It's, it's more about volume than it is about numbers. So we got a few there that don't look quite lit. I'm going to go ahead and just pile them up for a bit right over there pile them up right there for a little while just let them get all good and lit and then i'm going to show you how to set up for 250 275 using kind of my volume method not the counting method because these have already been going for 15 minutes 15 20 somewhere like that. so that didn't take very long for those guys all to get glowing again so we're using the number 12 today and I'm trying to go 250, 275. So I'm going to go six nice size ones. Maybe seven. Some of these are not um, 
very big anymore. I'm gonna try to pick out my biggest ones to go on the bottom. I'll go six, and since that two of these guys are pretty small, we'll go ahead and add one more. My, my pot's already hot, so we won't have to reheat, you know, it won't have to get the pot hot again. Go ahead and put the pot on. Now, this little rack here, Lodge makes, it come with my Dutch oven. So I don't know if you can buy that separately from Lodge. We're gonna find out for you, if I, even if I have to call the folks over at Lodge. But if you don't have this, you're out camping, just found you some green branches from a hardwood tree that are about an inch around. Cut you some of those off and lay three of them across the bottom of your pot. Yeah, I'm gonna leave you the link to back to where we did a whole chicken like that back in the green swamp down in Central Florida. It turned out awesome. Okay, but here today I'm gonna to show you that how to use this rack. That's gonna keep our roast up off the bottom and keep it from burning. All right, but if you don't have that, like I said, a couple of nice green hardwood twigs um, down under your meat. Now for 350, we put a solid ring, but here we're shooting for 250. So again, I'm gonna skip every other one that I normally would put up there. And I'm trying to choose the biggest ones I have over here in the pile because it's gonna be a long cook time. This is not, this is something you can pretty much just, and, and you're gonna see that at the end, I believe, even though this is my first attempt at it in Dutch oven. But uh, if you follow me for any amount of time, you know that I'm pretty good at adapting things that I know how to do in a regular chef's environment or in a house or regular kitchen to coming out here and doing it in the outdoors. So I'm probably going to leave just a little space in between them. So for a 12, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So same number as a pot. Normally we would be adding three here. We have the same number, but our coals are smaller. Okay. So with tonight's temperatures, it didn't take long for this to get where I can handle it with my a gloved hand. We're going to put just a little bit of yellow mustard on all the surfaces of this roast. And uh, you might want to have a glove like I do. You just kind of dribble it. You won't try to get too much on there. All right. This is going to be our binder for our seasoning to help uh, our seasoning adhere to it. We got a pretty, we actually managed to get a pretty nice sear in that Dutch oven just using uh, that uh, method I've, I, as far as I know that's kind of uh, original thing here I've never seen anybody else doing that uh, what I call the one line method where you just got one continuous line of charcoal that was a really fatty side there so some of that sear might peel off but that's going to be our upside Side is going to be up toward the uh, top of the oven. It looks pretty good. So now I have our Backwoods Gourmet um, Competition Steak and Brisket Rub. The uh, only thing I've changed from the original recipe is this has a little bit of Himalayan pink salt in it. And don't worry really about getting too much in this because it doesn't have a lot of salt. Rosemary, uh, garlic, onion powder, black pepper, all right, it's pretty daggum good stuff. Because again, you, when you do a slice off of this, you're only going to be getting just a little bit of that seasoning in your slice, unless you get that end piece and you're going to get a little more. That end piece is going to be the pieces that you're going to serve to your people that don't like they like there's a little bit more done than others okay those end pieces no nope. always on a prime rib are going to be more done than the interior of it but that looks pretty awesome so that's ready to go back on a dutch oven 
And uh, we're gonna do that next. That's gonna be pretty close to the top, so that's a good reason for keeping all of our coals out to the edges. So uh, out here at the outdoor kitchen, we spent a lot of time on this, and we had, and you know we got a lot of cast iron to hang, so we try to put as much of it up for you guys to be in the background here, because I know everybody enjoys it, enjoys seeing it, and uh, make it. Uh, Really nice for everyone too. I got my, some of my old signs up there. And uh, next video, we're actually going to be doing a dedication for this uh, this outdoor kitchen. That's the new ceiling fan. And I've also hung some of the cast iron up above the island here. Uh, some of the Dutch ovens. So you see us cut those onions that are still over there on the cutting board. So I want to make some melted onions in them. Today we're going to pull down a little a little camp made eight inch and throw them onions in there we'll see how they come out I'm gonna set up these onions for uh, a little bake I already put just a little veg oil in the bottom of there wiped it around I'm gonna put my two onions in there I want to have the narrow end up that helps them keep them from falling apart and here I'm just gonna take a little olive oil and spray them okay just to get them started once they start melt we're gonna put some butter and some seasoning on them so we'll get that lid on grab some tongs here and we'll just load up that top it won't take these guys long we're gonna set 350 on them so we're again backwards gourmet method throw the coal counting crap out the window because these are all burned down I'm going to put a solid ring no matter how big they are all the way around top of that oven if it gets too hot you can check on a little while it looks like it's getting too hot always pull them off okay but if you're trying to get dinner ready for your family and you're out of camp uh, rather it be done a little bit early be done too late so we're gonna go ahead and try to finish up these the prep on these melted onions I got those going pretty good there They're already getting a good going and instead of butter what I decided to do was use those drippings from the beef that uh, we're in the bottom of the Dutch oven gonna go ahead and Put those on them. Bring over a little bit of our uh, seasoning. Same stuff that we used on the on the prime rib. Go ahead and just give them a little sprinkle on top, just like that. Lid back on. Hey, now if you got hunting and camping and other other stuff to do, hunting, fishing, whatever you're doing at camp. Just uh, leave this go. You're not gonna overcook this, I don't believe, uh, where we got it right now. We're gonna let that go at least an hour. Probably gonna let this completely burn out. Probably gonna let this completely burn out too before it reaches temperature. So I would have no problem walking away from this. And when you come back, it's probably gonna be absolutely perfect. But we'll be back here when this is all burned down probably about an hour something like that so if you got something else to do with your kids or your family or whatever go for a little hike go for a quick trip in the woods or go make a few casts out in the lake and don't worry about any of this right here that's a great thing about Dutch oven cooking because that temperature is always going to be decreasing as these coals burn down you really don't have to worry about overcooking anything. Guys, it's been about 45 minutes. The uh, charcoal's almost all the way burnt down. I brought out my Maverick probe, put her in there. That battery's about dead. She's at 
one that prime ribs at 122 124 that's a little above rare okay and then uh i'm gonna check on those onions those burnt down too they're really nice and soft looking but they're not where i want them to be and those coals have about had it put my hand right on top of there they're just gone you know it's kings for charcoal so these are almost completely gone so we got another chimney of charcoal it's the half a chimney of charcoal that's all we're gonna need gonna go ahead and uh, start loading the back the tops up try to finish this up Check my Maverick. I'm at like 136, so that's my target temperature. Kind of looking for medium rare. So, okay. I tell you what, the, the 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 aroma off that thing is awesome. So let's put it on a cutting board and we'll just tint it. So for final presentation, I'm just going to sprinkle just a little bit more of our rub over the slice. I'm going to give it just a little fresh green onion over the plate. And then a lot of you guys know that horseradish is really awesome with that very rich prime rib. I'm going to go ahead and put some pure horseradish right on the plate right there and have right with those slices. We do add a little bit of au jus that's in the bottom of the uh, of the onions because remember we put that in there So we're going to just pull that out with a spoon, kind of dribble that over the plate. It's going to bring the essence from the beef and the onions right up. And there you go. That's a roasted prime rib in the Dutch oven with melted onions and horseradish. Back was gourmet style. So to be eligible for the Dow Strong giveaway, just go over to the Dow Strong website. I'm leaving you the link right down in the description box. Just leave in the comments what the Dow Strong product warranty is, uh, and you'll be in a running to win this beautiful, beautiful chef knife. So you guys are always wanting us to taste our food on camera. I don't really know why, but uh, we're going to go ahead and give it a shot. Here's some of that melted onion. Wow. Um, the beef flavor really comes through on that. 
So some of that prime rib. You want a bite of that, I know you do. Mm. A sear, a seasoning really comes through on that. If you make this a camp, you're going to be a big hit with all your campers. So if you like what we're doing, please smash that like button right down there to subscribe to our channel. You can do it right over there for another great Backwoods Gourmet video. It's going to be right up there. And for our whole playlist, Cast Iron Dutch Oven Cooking, it's going to be right up there. We'll see you next time.